Hello and welcome to the first episode of KP Opinions. Um, we are your hosts and co-captains of Crack and Pinion, Mikey Florsheim. And Adam Ofterhead. Um, and so in this first episode, our agenda is basically to talk about the, um, the season in general and any strategies and thoughts we have about it. Um, so to start us off, Adam, would you like to talk about just your initial thoughts of the season? Okay, so obviously the big thing this season is the barrier. Uh, it's an interesting idea. Uh, what first was trying to do, I think, was get us out of the mechanum wheel phase that we've been in for the past number of years. Uh, mechanum wheels are the best because they provide the largest range of motion. You can strafe side to side and move any normal way a wheel would. Uh, but now, because of the barriers, we're introduced to an interesting challenge where we either have to make the robot small enough to fit through a 12 inch, or well, about 12 inch gap, or we have to make it go over the gap. And what first was thinking, uh, we assume, is that mechanic wheels wouldn't be able to go over the barrier, but I think our team has found this year that they still can. Uh, we just have to have motors that are, have high torque enough. Uh, yeah, and, and to talk about that, um, the way that we kind of overcame that is we saw that the um, kind of uh, out-of-the-box drivetrains didn't really work for this game as they um, had too low of clearance and they couldn't go over the barrier as well. So what we decided to do is take various go build the components that we knew worked super well, and we basically just completely changed the form factor by... CNC in our own place and making a custom drivetrain. So that worked super well for us. Um, I mean, leave in the comments. We're really interested to know what your guys' solutions were, but that's what we found worked the best for us. And um, on to the next subject, uh, which would be scoring. Adam, what do you think about scoring in this game? Well, uh, this is a generally high scoring game. Uh, in Skystone, uh, a lot of the good teams would only get up to 100, 200, that range. Now we're seeing numbers like 300 plus, and at least in Wisconsin, we're not even at the state competition yet. So, you know, there, there is a lot of movement back and forth, cycle time with moving freight in. Uh, it's interesting that as in Rover Ruckus, we were able to collect two at a time. We can now only have one ball or one cube at a time. So you have to adapt your intake and your outtake to that. Uh, so what we have is we have, much like our Rover Ruckus robot, we have slides that go out, we have an intake that rotates, we collect the freight, it goes back in and slides up to the goal so that we can uh, dispense of the freight almost just, just outside the warehouse. So that's how we do scoring. Uh, we like to score on the top goal, but uh, it's the, the sorry, alliance goal, shared goal. Uh, there's, there's a bit of an interesting duality there. Mikey, do you want to elaborate? Um. Yeah, it's interesting that you brought that up. There seems to be two different uh, types of robots that have come through this. Either, actually, let me rephrase that. There's probably been three. Um, there's either a robot that's super, like, extremely good at shared hub. There's a robot that's extremely good at, uh, like, at team hub. But then there's also teams that can do both but aren't as effective as the teams that are super good at either one. It's almost like um, it's a very polarizing aspect of the game, and you kind of have to either commit to it or accept that uh, a team won't be as good at both. Um, but it brings up a good point where I think the decision process in designing a robot for this game was very delayed, and that caused a lot of teams very early in the season to not perform as well as they would have liked. Um, and that just kind of created what you see, where in December, the scores were about 80 to 120, but now we're getting up into the 300s range. So that's just been a very ob interesting observation to see. Right, so there is the uh, alliance goal and then the shared goal. But interestingly enough, we were practicing with some other teams, and we found that if we would just real quick place a few freight on the shared goal and then both placed on the high goal, we would score quite a bit more than if one team did shared goal and one team did high goal. But 
I've noticed that in alliance selection throughout the season so far, what a lot of teams have been doing is having, you know, one team doing high goal and the other team doing shared goal, you know, a captain and first pick most usually. So, you know, that's interesting. But I think we're slowly figuring out that the strat is to quick figure out shared goal because really unless there's like a really efficient robot with the shared goal, usually whoever gets to the shared goal first and places the first two or three Fred on there wins it most likely. Uh, a lot of robots throughout each match aren't able to place more than a couple. So it's kind of a waste of your, it's a waste of points to put more than a few freight onto the shared goal when you can go to the high goal after you've placed a few and already tipped it and score some more points. I mean, and that's an interesting point you brought up where um, teams tend to um, pick teams that have the opposite strategy as them. But maybe is it really worth it to go for a shared goal um, when the variation between matches is it's not a guarantee that you always win it because that's 20 points that you can either have or not have. And that variation could cost you matches. So is it worth it to just risk uh, two points every single cycle to do that for the extra 20 points? Or is it worth it to gain two points every cycle and go for team shipping up? What do you think, Adam? Yeah, I mean, it's a big debate uh, among our team so far this season. Uh, some people think that you know, robots that can efficiently do the shared goal, uh, and they're fast, you know, they're fast at it, they get that amount of freight, because they have the, the, I guess, lesser chosen route, you know, a lot of teams are choosing the alliance goal, that they're going to go the farthest, because they're going to be able to pair with the most teams, and, you know, get the most points, but in my opinion, I think, and especially since we specialize in the, the high portion of the Alliance goal, that, you know, I mean, it's, it scores the most points. So if you can do that efficiently more than the shared goal, that's really worth it in the end. Yeah, and I completely agree. Um, I mean, leave in the comments what you guys think the best strategy is. Um, we'll reply, um, we'll take your uh, advice into consideration, whatever you guys think, and um, maybe leave some more questions in the next video for what you think we should talk about in next Cracking Opinions. This was just a little sample. Um, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.